it's Elena from the Wonder of Cichlids. Today we are going to show you how to chip our fish. Hey guys, it's Trev. Um, back again. So um, I just want to show you quickly how we ship our fish and what we use. Obviously these are some of the different size boxes we use. And uh, the bottom two mostly go to the airport and the top two end up going uh, FedEx, UPS. But sometimes that can change depending on the order. So we do use four different styros. And um, here you can see. Good solid thick styro. These ones are great for the winter, like the 24 inch ones. These are some of the smaller ones we use. So we prefer to use solid styros, definitely a must. I mean, you can use the cut up ones as well, but if you're using the cut up ones and you put those together, I suggest like putting a bag around the fish to keep any leaking water from penetrating the box and softening it. So those are the styros. And those are the boxes we use. So just um, a few things we use here. Like I said, for the people that use the boxes that they, um, you know, that they cut up. We put little bit bin liners in every uh, shipment. It's tidier, you know what I mean? Any, just in case there's a, someone drops a box or something. A tape roller, very important. Tape up the boxes and stuff. And oxygen for someone that ships like a few days a week is definitely a must and you know always have a spare bottle in hand. A gauge, we prefer to use a little balloon filler you know. You put the bag in you just twist it and it fills it with air, it's very fast and efficient. And it's nice to be able to work like this. And obviously good solid elastics, this is the size I like to use. They're um... I forget, I think yeah, they're number 62, but they're a good solid one. And uh, obviously, Sharpies are a must, mark those bags. And so these are a couple of the chemicals you can use if you get fish from your fish club or you want to bring fish to an auction. You know, Amquil Plus, it, uh, you know, ammonia detoxifier, water conditioner, and fish protector is another um, good thing to protect the fish and its scales, you know. It relaxes them a bit and stress coat is another option so like I said anybody that wants to ship fish on a smaller scale ships one you know a box here and there to a friend or you want to bring fish to a fish auction at your local club you know it's very easy a uh, bag fish you don't necessarily need oxygen if you're just bringing them same day you know just bag them use chemicals and you'll be fine so this is like just an example of the bag these are the 10 inch bags we use they're three mil we double bag everything and we use sizes from five six inch and then it goes eight oh sorry five six seven eight ten twelve and fifteen and we do have the bigger full bags if we need them it was very rare we use those you know and this is just an example of a we know i was bagging fish this morning from the you know a customer pick up at the house so i just did one bag while i was there early this morning so that just shows you like it's been there since this morning it's still holding a good bit of oxygen and so i actually knot the bags i do knot the bags but i also band it as well but i can't do the twisty method where people use multiple bands it just kills my fingers it's not for me but that's how i do it and it's been working and like i said anyone can do it if you don't feel like uh you're not able to do with the rubber bands you can get gemco or clearbags.com you can get the extra long bags and anyone can knot them it's very easy you know so uh, that's some of the things we use and um the oxygen the chemicals you know and the bag the different bags so um hopefully like when you decide to bag your fish you know you might find some of the stuff handy and you know some of the information might be able to help you and you can always like message me questions and i'll definitely get back to you so one of the other things is shipping in the winter in the winter we use only the ticker styro and we usually put two heat packs in each box you know and uh, usually in the winter we'll only ship overnight air that'll have the fish there between 10 and 11 a.m. Or we'll ship to a customer center if it's UPS or a FedEx. And another thing is um, when you're shipping uh, with the airport, you know, it gets there 
same day so the fish aren't exposed that much but we definitely use the thicker styros with the heat packs and they're definitely a must so you don't want like in the winter you want to make sure if the fish are going to a house in the winter you want to make sure those people are there to sign for those fish don't let them on the porch because they will freeze to death in a very short time and the same in very hot climates when you're uh, fishing up but uh, in the summer going to a very hot climate you want to make sure those fish are received straight away you don't want them sitting in the sun because they will cook faster than you think you know one other thing too um, I suggest when we um, ship fish to people or if you're shipping fish to people have them float the bags and uh, for 15 to 30 minutes depending on the temperature um, don't have the don't drip acclimate you know it's it's just bad to drip acclimate and uh, I'll you know being honest about it I know people still do it when I tell them but they don't realize like the stress they're putting the fish under you know like, cause, because during the shipping you know the pH drops ammonia is detoxified and when you drip acclimate the fish you increase the pH and expansionally uh, increases the, the toxicity of the ammonia in the bag and that can be deadly on the fish you know and it can cause a lot of stress and you know it causes all that heavy breathing and scratching when they get out of the bucket and then so flows for 15 to 30 minutes you know check the temperature of the bag once your fish are floated just release them over in it you know into a bucket and that way then like you can just net them out the water doesn't get into the tank and release the fish then in your um you can release the fish into your tank another thing too when your fish are in your like just being introduced to your tank one big thing i do recommend is turn off the lights do not feed definitely do not feed if you have a quarantine tank please use a quarantine tank because it's important especially fish the travel, the shipping, it gets them and stresses them out. If you do not have a quarantine tank and you have one or two aggressive fish, go and get a little net box like here, or you can get plastic ones. Put the aggressive fish in those breeder boxes or nets or whatever you have. And that way then they're not going to bother or stress out the new fish because that's when most, you know, like most disasters happen is when fish are newly received, they're weaker and they're tired and they're easy targets. And the other thing is, do not feed the fish. Give it 24 hours. Do not feed them. Turn off the lights, darken out the tank. Let the new fish recover. Give them time to get their strength back so they can hold their own with the other fish in the tanks if you're mixing them. So those are a couple of small tips but that I've learned, you know, because I've, I'll have people sending me pictures right away and feeding fish within a couple of minutes. And... Uh, it's really not good for them, you know. You you need to give them time to get over their um, stressful um, shipping, shipping, you know. So here at the Wonder of Cichlids, we personally use UPS and FedEx as our ground carriers. And we do a lot of like overnight shipping with them and, and they get the boxes there. We will do two day shipping on request, but uh, we there are certain fish we won't ship two day. And um, any bigger orders or any long distance orders, we definitely do Southwest. We do Southwest or um, Delta then if there's no Southwest available, because Southwest is the cheapest option for a 24 inch box. You're talking, um, you, you know, you're talking $48, you know, $50. And with Delta it's 64, but sometimes that can be a lot cheaper than, um, you know going doing um, UPS or FedEx overnight and some people don't like going to the airport it's understandable but um, we will not use USPS it's just um, we've done it years ago and you know the results were terrible they're really not equipped for live fish I barely trust them with a postcard but uh, I don't want to take none against them but we just had bad luck so please don't ask us to ship USPS because we won't and we haven't for a long time I hope you find this video some bit interesting anyway or you get a look into how we ship our fish and hopefully you've got some, t you've got some tips from it or 
you know you figured out like a way to ship your fish or you'd like to try it and if you haven't shipped before and you want to try shipping fish hit me up message me I'll, I'll help you no problem and it's not something that's very difficult What was that, Kira? Don't forget to leave a like. So Kira said, don't forget to leave a like. Alright guys, bye, thank bye. you.